So now let's listen to Annie Lishner and all her speakers. Right, thank you. This is not going to be an easy roundtable. This morning we heard all about all the success stories. But failure, how do we deal with failure and how do we react? How do we recover and bounce back? Uh, so please, let's welcome Marie De, who's working with uh, Via Dio. She's the web designer. And we've also got Jeremy Emsalem, who's a serial entrepreneur. He launched Golden Book. And then I know there's uh, Jacques Croissant, who's supposed to be here. And then our surprise is uh, Cyrizine Arman, who is in charge of our media. Marie, can you just introduce yourself very quickly? Yeah, good afternoon. My name is Marie Deu. I'm a visual designer for the Adieu. So four years ago, I set up my own business, which is called Secret Velvet. Thank you. Which has now disappeared. It was an online um, shop with a physical brick and mortar store as well. Good morning. Good afternoon. My name is Jeremy M. Salem. When I was still in school, I set up Golden Book, which was a very strange sort of e. Um, E shop, you know, where you sold grannies who knitted their um, their bonnets and their scarves. It worked really well. And now I'm with Bitcoin, which has nothing to do with it, and an app mobile. A mobile app, sorry. Cyril. Cyril Zimmerman. When I was in school, I set up iMedia, but that was long before. And uh, it was a payment platform for iPay, which is one of the providers for uh, Presta Shop. So let me not be a hypocrite. I, I can't say that I'm ashamed of what I did. I'm very proud of it. Uh, and uh, the company has been, uh, you know, listed for 15 years uh, now in the long period of time and which is something which is a, a source of pride for me. There were moments, you know, when we went through a lot of uncertainty and doubt and we could have had a, a, a definite setback. Now, Marie, you said that when you set up your project, uh, everything is well, you're really on cloud number nine, and then, ah, uh, here we go. Here's our last speaker. This person is from, this is Jacques Froisson from Altaïde. Good afternoon. My name is Jacques Froisson and I'm the founder of Altaïde, which is a recruitment agency dedicated to e-commerce and the web. I'm also co-founder of Shape, which is an e-conference in Marseille. Right, so Marie, you were saying everything is brilliant when you start. So tell us about your project. How did you set it up and um, what happened? So Secret Velvet, it took me just two months to set it up, including the internet site. And it was just an impulse. It wasn't at all something I was working at. And um, I, was, I had a job elsewhere. But I just felt that there was a lot to be done in this field. And I was dying to learn. So I just went into it mindlessly. Now, with the hindsight, I feel perhaps I should have taken my time. However, I regret nothing. So it was an e-commerce solution, which was slightly strange. And then I went on to Presta Shop. And in less than a month, I had launched the site. And in the second month, the press was already talking about it. I think I just went too fast. It was a blitzkrieg. And you, for you too, was it all, all perfect to begin with? Huh? Because you were really impulsed by media. You said it's very good, but not too much of it. Well, media is useful because it replaces television, but it doesn't help sell. Huh? I'm sorry, but the microphone doesn't work very well. 
une école de publicité. Well, I uh, graduated from a communications and advertising school. So I thought about, you know, an e-commerce site with granny selling their wear, you know, their bonnets and so on. And then do a little e-wear so people know what I'm all about and buy my stuff. And since it's an easy subject, so I had um, a lot of TV coverage, a lot of publicity on radio and telly. But that's not enough because people are sitting in front of their tellies and not on their computer. And if the internet site can't take the load of a newsletter, you know, almost immediately it serves no purpose. Plus, and this is something I didn't know, to sell on the internet, you have to know internet. When I sell a product, if I sell, if, and mine had a story too, Granny's Knitting, if I just showed it, it's a beautiful showcase and people would have bought, or would have bought it, but that's not enough. It's a real job and I didn't know it. Hmm? I'd only bought stuff and I didn't know about servers, I didn't look after servers. So, I lost about a year's order just with that sort of stuff. Because you didn't have the required skills on the internet, you couldn't be helped, no one was there to um, help you, couldn't you outsource all that? Well, when you set up, uh, you feel that you're the best in the world and that you don't need any help at all, and which is an uh, unforgivable mistake. Uh, that's what I thought of at the time, but I've learned since then. I'm on TV, I explain what I'm doing and so on, I mean, that, that's it. So I didn't have the required skill to actually manage an online. Store. And apart from that, since I have a story, I don't want it on my homepage, which will only be products, no price, no nothing. I'll just go on the basis of my story, and people will visit the internet site and then scroll around and they'll buy. Obviously, we weren't selling enough. And then one day, I, I was told, Look, I'm your shareholder, says my uh, shareholder, test it put a product with a price on the home page, make it a very rapid channel for payment, and then you'll see that it works a lot better. Marie and Jeremy, maybe you've looked at things the other way around. You were boosted too early by media, right? You were really given a lot of coverage. So you're saying that you really need to be mature in what you're doing, in your aims and so on. But media is just pushing you too much. It propels you into the limelight. Hmm? I think media was helpful. For me, it was helpful because it helped me mature very quickly. I can't really uh, say that you shouldn't have them around and you can't um, grumble about them, especially since you get all this free publicity. However, you shouldn't get uh, starstruck only, as Jeremy says. Press, of course, gives you that vibe. Hey, I'm on TV and, uh, and so on. I'm in such and such a magazine. Isn't that brilliant? And I've done it. I'm there. But no, you've got your product logistics and all that. The fallout isn't all that great. And also, you tend to forget about the product. It gets very risky then. So you must be completely focused. That's what was said this morning during one of the conferences. It's very important to stay focused. One last point, both of you. You were all alone, right? Yes, I was, says Marie. I began as a self-employed person, all a single-person company, then I switched into a private limited company, the fa a family concern, with my sister and mother, who were just lending me their names, really, just a pseudonym. Then today I regret having done that, selected that um, company. But I thought I could do everything, but you know, you can't. You can't be good all round. All right, Cyril, 19 years ago with your iMedia when you started, was it, was, how was it that you started? With doubts or with the magic in your eyes? That time it was so easy, there were no major stakes. I was a student and there was um, no problem because there was no market. In 2004, iCommerce represented 1.2% of all sales in France, whatever be the distribution channel, magazine, uh, stores or, uh, or e-stores. So it was much, it was just peanuts. So my, the first advertising campaign was for Internet Explorer 2, version 2. 
And I saw the same thing for 12 months running because they were the only broadcasters, the only advertisers. And with iPay in 2003, it was virtually the same thing. It was uh, a means of payment on uh, internet. It wasn't all that. It, it was at its beginnings. There was uh, the market was all ours. I mean, there wasn't much to it. And uh, apart from that, I represent Axel, and PrestaShop is also a member of Axel. It's one of the board members. Now, Axel is a startup. It's for medium-sized uh, companies. There's some big groups as well, and we share this uh, digital transformation. And, and that's where you either make it a hit or you just uh, go out with a whimper, you know. This is something that changes a business which is traditional. Your business that you've started, let's say, four years ago. And it, so it's to switch, go from computer to mobile, right? So to answer your question about uh, freshness, well, I dried out a bit in 2003 because this talent, freshness, this uh, taste for danger, and then financing, which was provided actually by the boom and helped me go farther. I didn't have all that later. We were, you know, 180 people over 12 countries, and, um, you know, we were listed. And um, two, hours, two years later, we had cut down. We didn't have much money. In fact, we were running up big debt. So we were down to 45 people. And so we were wondering if we should stop altogether and pull out. Because sometimes the failure gets too complicated to handle. You're completely drowned or just hang on. But since I'm stubborn, I didn't give up at all. And today I have no regrets, no regrets. But but it's true that I lost a lot of my uh, peace of mind because I decided to hang on in there. I just went at it because I was convinced that all these changes that you see in fashion, that you see on e-commerce and everywhere, eat on EY's uh, mobile and so on, they take a while. And as entrepreneurs, you sometimes need to anticipate all this, anticipate trends, which will finally catch up with uh, the masses, be it B2B or B2C. Mm. You have to be patient and you have to hire them. So patience, right. So when you hire people, is failure something that you look at as well? Particularly the way this person reacts and the way he bounces back. Or does that put you off? Yes, I do take a look at failure, but not to uh, take people off my shortlist. On the contrary, I take that very positively. You know. Look at Bill Gates now. When he was at the head of Microsoft, each time he asked candidates if they'd ever known failure, most of them said no. But he went for those who did, so that's a concept that's remained. Yeah. I'm, apart from that, I need to understand I, what is the candidate thinking of his failure? How has he analyzed it? What are the lessons he draws from it? It's not the failure itself that I'm uh, interested in, but the way he's going to discuss it with me and the way he analyzes it, he or she. Now, these two people in startups, they are fairly conventional failures. I've been recruiting people in startups for nearly 20 years, and there are some that just don't function, they don't run. I have seen quite a few. I've even lost money when I back them. But there are always um, two phases. Is. One is when it goes too fast, and then by the time you mature, it's a bit too late to take the right decisions, or it's a market context which is bad, or what I also see is that people don't really analyze their setback properly. You know, in France, you can't raise money, there's no one willing to back us, and so on. And so they refuse to acknowledge their weakness. And Despite uh, uh, these cases, there are others who always succeed, right? So I feel that failure can be a source of, it can be positive, but you must know how to take your, uh, look at it in retrospect. Marie and Jeremy, after that initial effervescence and after the initial cloud number nine, when you got back to earth and when you were seeing the bitter truth, 
Can you tell us when it happened to, for either of you? Well, for me, it was in the middle of the second year, virtually the third year. I would say it was solitude. I was all by myself. I wouldn't say that I had lost interest. I felt alone because I had to fight for everything to exist, to fight against uh, the tax administration, to get myself known, to send my parcels. You know, I wasn't working with the post. It was, I'm the only human. And it ruined my everyday life. I lost my creative touch. And my sales uh, fell. I didn't feel like fighting anymore, so I just started giving up little by little. That lasted for about a year. And I, uh, it began with shutting down my shop in Bordeaux, which I uh, managed for nearly a year by myself, as well as the internet site. And it just got on my nerves, so I shut it all down. And I wanted to uh, bounce back. It lasted six months. And I thought, let me just refocus on uh, internet sites, those that were good. But I never could because, you know, all the daily problems just gathered up together, starting with, you know, taxes, an agency that made me lose my listing on Presta Shop. So there were lots of things. Some of them were quite amusing. So, as I said, that's enough, let's stop, let's pull out while the going's good. So, I shut up shop, the brick and mortar, the site, and that's how it ended. So, it was loneliness, problems, plus, uh, you know, all the daily hassles. Now, you said, I was very bitter, you know, when you have to bite all the time, fight all the time for everything. You've got competition, criticism, judgment, uh, plagiarism, hatred, all that stuff. It's like a war, right? You're, you're losing a war. Yes, it was very tough. You know, because you're losing face. When you're launching yourself, I just hope that you've got a strong personality and a solid head. I would go back into it, but I do hope you have a lot of energy because you need it. You, you shouldn't give up. Jeremy, is that also your uh, reaction? Slightly bitter? Well, you know, banks very quickly said to us, you want to borrow 50,000 euros, and we'd only been around for a year, and we had sold 200 bonnets, mm. and they were willing to lend us 50,000, and at the time, because I was in school, and advertising school like that, not a commerce school, so I said 50,000, that's an investment, I thought of it as an investment, but a bank loan is not an investment, not at all, and you have to pay it back, you see. So they send, lent it to me really quickly. I had other investors too, you know. If you're not properly advised, it wasn't exactly my case, but let's say I wasn't mature enough. I spent money a bit too quickly when I should have stuck with the MDPs and simple sites and not spent money, so much money on logistics. We had a logistics simple system which was outsourced and it cost us an arm and a leg. It's because the investment firm said, if we give you a million euros, how are you going to sell a million products a year? So I said, if, if I have the right uh, logistics, if it's really powerful, it will work well. So I did that before the funds actually invested. So I started in preparing the entire machinery. And then finally the funds didn't turn up. And the logistics guy said that you was 30,000 euros. And there's no money coming in. And so there was a mirage. Also. We were se selling these bonnets for 50 euros, you know. That was also a big problem. Anything at 50 euros, we were too expensive for cheap, uh, for expensive ones and no, too expensive for cheap ones. We were not properly positioned. We didn't know where we were, no one knew where we were. So that's what happened. Similarly for scarves, you know, we just double prices and everything cost at least 100 euros. Now that works really well. I remember there was a Japanese store, a Japanese shop. Apparently it's something that does really well in Japan and they ordered 
virtually the entire stock of the year. It was about 5,000 bonnets a year. So, but we didn't have that many, so it was good news was to have that huge order, bad news was that we couldn't handle it, we couldn't produce it, and we couldn't fund, fund it to make the products, you to buy them, pay grandmothers, suppliers, etc., to make them. And you need a certain number of grandmothers. And on the other hand, you pay it much later. And that's where the bank, where, which was lending you money, they're not willing to uh, lend anymore. They don't trust you. So I'd burned all my books, you see. I had uh, lost all my credibility. If you don't really need money, don't take it. Just take it when you absolutely need it. Because if not, you lose your credibility and they won't lend you again. So it was crazy. I, I went down because I couldn't handle a, a huge order. Now, if you were to do iMedia again today, would it be easier or difficult or what? Well, it would be easier not because I'm older and I'm also richer, but there you go. One must realize that all of us over here, we are all very special, we've got privileges, we are exclusive, you know. We were, we are here because we love uh, digital. Now, if we were specialized in uh, machine tools or in any kind of industrial uh, component, and if you're working with a company called Berlier in the Poitou Charente, then you'd have more of a network than you have over here. So I do agree with you. It's tough, but at the same time, there's this greater freedom, which is just fantastic. You can do anything you like uh, as a self-employed person. We want to create something, we really want to do something which has to exist between now and tomorrow evening with employees and so on, we must reach the right uh, political mass, but without the same investment needs and the same financial requirements, whereas 40 or 50 years ago you couldn't do it. If you wanted to set up shop, if you wanted to start a company, you know, with let's say industry, because in the past you talked about industry and production and not about services. It's now become simpler. Uh, you know, France is very extraordinary for uh, setting up shop, uh, setting up your own company. Let's stop talking about social costs and about uh, taxes and all that. That's all rubbish, she says. There's a lot of initiative that we all have, which wasn't true even 20 years ago. When I st started by media, I mean, I'm realizing it now, it's easier to, to start uh, doing these things now because it's so easy and PrestaShop is one of the tools, it's there. Financial motor roads are there, they weren't there earlier. You're not stared at like a, an alien, it's just that you're someone who's part of the uh, trend. People will actually resign from Google and come and join us. So that just goes to show that they feel that this is fantastic. It's a great blossoming of our intellectual and financial capacities, you see, based on just what we do. I think that's a very important point. There's a lot of intellectual stimulation. And I think that's one of the main themes of Axel, that association I was telling you about. Yeah. All that we do has a certain duration, which is very short. It's all very temporary, and so that stimulates you even more. You've got all these stats, you've got a lot of failure rates and so on, but it's a fantastic stimulation because it's a up or down, you know, it's that sort of thing. You, you, you're talking now of mobiles, you're talking of being teleconnected. So things are common and things are different too in ways of doing business. And so I would say the ecosystem has never been so exciting and so good and we must take full advantage of it. Anyway, it's great to hear you because uh, we're not used to hearing people say that it's easy to do business here. 
you've got all sorts of administrative hassles and you seem to be saying, no, go ahead and do it. France is a good place to work. We've got all that we need to succeed. Well, I've just set up a subsidiary in the States and I was, all I did was fill in of, uh, uh, two pages to start my company and it costs nothing. It's very easy. But in France also, it's quite easy. It'll take about a week and there's no minimum capital required. You can also be a self, single self-employed person, which now is about uh, a system that exists for five or six years. You have financial companies, you've got uh, all sorts of business angels, even the government that funds you. It's easy, it's easy. So there is a public financing also that helps a private financing, especially for small entrepreneurs, and it's not expensive. You can set up your company. But when I was in the game, it, I needed 50,000 francs. So I formed another legal company which didn't require that much money. And it's what independent uh, merchants used to use at the time because that didn't require a minimum amount of funding. So my uh, status, my legal status was completely crazy and as a result I ended up paying a lot of social costs later. But today it's much better, so take advantage of it. Thank you. Now before I talk, go on. You've created, you've set up other companies too and which are working and now you have your own hiring uh, agency. What is it that you retain of your past experience? Well, I've never set up a company. I've never established one. I co-founded a startup, but virtually at the same time as Altaid and several others since then. And it was just in, on next to French Swipe. I set it up with Christian uh, Neveu. I think we made a mistake, but we have a lot to learn of it. Now, French Web uh, went on from length to length because they learned a lot from partnership and so on. We discuss it sometimes. I also learn from other people's failures, not just mine. <laughs> Just to take, tell you briefly, Altaïd now is nearly 15 years old. I began in January, in June 20, 2000. And my first year went off really well. And the second one, and the second year when it started, it took virtually six weeks to stop. I had recruited a lot of people and my turnover had shot up, but, but I was stuck finally with just a single for a trainee and three other people. I had to handle everybody. So there are certain periods like that which are difficult, very difficult to manage. But having said that, uh, I'm very optimistic by nature and quite laid back. I've often been treated as a crazy man. At the time, I had three young children, my wife wasn't working, and I resigned. So I started with nothing. I wasn't even given a golden handshake. And it seemed uh, pretty obvious that I had to do it, whereas a lot of uh, entrepreneurs over here, you know, what should I go for it, should I go for it? Uh, so, you just remain cool and luck comes to you. And that's how you handle opportunities, you look for them. You have to talk a lot, you have to discuss a lot, and that's what I would advise all of you young people to do. Young in your company, I mean, with young companies. Go and share with others, really. Don't be scared of talking, and don't be scared of thinking that your best idea is going to get pinched up. It'll help you. It'll help you a lot listening to others. Now, what is it that you have learned from this experience? So, Mary, she's changed, she's changed direction. I haven't changed direction. That's my initial training. So, um, background. Well, there was four years that were very intense. Uh, I can remember it. It was like living a full life. It was a major 
episode in my life. I met a lot of people. I've discovered a lot of different jobs that I would have never thought of before. I would have never thought I could have done those jobs. I learned a lot about myself. It helped me grow. It helped me in my professional life today. So for all those reasons, I want to do it again. To me, failure is not negative. In France, uh, failure is highly negative. To me, it's evolution. It's uh, logical continuation of something, failure, pretty much like success, are two things that are very close. So I've learned a lot and I hope to do it again very soon. Catherine Baba said that you have to be an entrepreneur, you have to be Shiva, you need to have many skills, you have to be flexible, multitasking, you have to be on every field and you need to have all this energy in the morning. I'd speak to grandmothers on the phone, in the evening I will talk to my content and the press. So, what I learned, where I failed, is I've spent too much. I wanted to manage everything at once and, every, and I was taking all the bad and the good advice and also all the partnerships I've had. So, really, at the beginning, at the, even though it lasted four years, uh, it's not a big company with 500 employees. At the very start, you really want to focus on your product. And what I'm doing now, whether it is Bitcoin or another mobile application for business cards, we don't talk much to the press. We wait f to make sure that things are running smoothly, to all the servers are well backed up. And we move gradually on a step-by-step -step basis. You don't want to take the big leap immediately. But, and that's quite complicated, you have to remain uh, dynamic and uh, I don't finish at work at 7, I finish at midnight, you need to keep that energy going on and the drive. You have to be very fast, uh, you have to climb the small steps at a very fast pace instead of taking the big leap, otherwise you don't pay attention. You really want to be focused. That's the first thing I learned. Secondly, well, the banks. The, uh, a loan is not an investment. Each time I look at the accounts, uh, uh, I think the message go was understood. Uh, it's it's not a it's not a donation. It's a loan. It's not an investment above all. And the third thing that I've learned, because I've seen many of them, is to have. A partnership is very complicated. It's even more complicated when it's with a friend. Sometimes, you know, I hear people say, well, should I be on my own? Or if I found some friend or someone I know very well, well, we could partner together, we could team up, uh, because I would have more trust in him or her. But when is the partnership? When things run smoothly, that's great. So, but when things go wrong, it's a disaster. And a partnership with friends, just, you know, team up with acquaintances, because it's the best way to lose your partner and lose your friend and your company, you lose your business, you lose the drive and motivation. And that's it, really. Uh, just some advice for young entrepreneurs or people in the room who have doubts. Don't have doubts. You should be aware of how, of how lucky we are. How lucky we are to be here with you uh, to discuss the digital economy and see what we will do next. See, realize how lucky you are to be in France. When you have difficulties to recruit a developer, think that it costs twice as much on the other side of the Atlantic. So forget, I know you hear a lot of bad things uh, in the media and rumors that you hear also in the ecosystems. You should be aware of how, how lucky you are. Don't doubt, but never be completely happy with yourself. Jacques, some advice from Jacques. Well, a uh, piece of advice I would give uh, to um, add up to what Cyril said. Find a mentor. Find someone with experience who will help you sort of uh, take some distance and you know, and um, re help rebuild your trust in certain things. I've been working with two entrepreneurs 
and discussing with me and when they exchange with me I can see that they know what what they have to do but just expressing itself and sometimes I confirm it expressing it, it helps them not to doubt and keep moving forward because your ambition as an entrepreneur is very important so be careful with everything you hear around you the rumors and so on don't keep in mind keep in mind that the e-commerce environment operates differently 10 percent of growth uh, for several years no other economic field is of that side because here we're talking about 57 billion no economic sector has any uh, as a similar growth so everything you hear is not applicable to e-commerce so well let's are you ready for questions and answer questions from the audience no Oh, yes, one. I can hear the word uh, raising funds. I've heard the word raising funds. And it sounds quite mysterious to me. Fundraising, what does that mean? Can you be more specific? Um, fundraising. Fundraising is about seeking investors. So finding investors who will put more money than you expected in your company. Uh, because when you set up a business, you're going to put a bit of money in it, but not much, but you put a lot of energy and ideas and then you create a team. And if you need more financial means to further develop your company, well, quite quickly, the means you had thought about will be far uh, superior to what uh, you had invested. So you have to convince other shareholders that the value of what you've done is not only money related, it's also the money you invested, it's also the energy, the creation and the teams who've been working on it, and also the turnover, even if the business is starts immediately to be profitable. So the idea is to have financial investors to say that what you set up for 100 is now worth 1,000 because you put a lot of creativity and talent and energy into it. So if you need 200, they will give you 200 for a value of 1,000. Also, initially, you had only given 100 at the start. So it's the money you're going to recover in the company by telling other investors, give me the means to make it grow, and in return, you will become uh, uh, an associate partner in my business. Any other questions? No. So you have to be humble. You need a lot of you need a lot of energy. You have doubts, but it's good to have doubts sometimes to question yourself. Is, do you think um, failure is a learning curve that helps you grow? Oh yes, definitely. Okay. Uh, as, give please give a big round of applause to this round table to our guests who are brave enough to come here and thanks a lot and all the best to you.